Welcome to another edition of the Turnpike Sports Book Report. I'm Doug Weishuttle here with Dave Weishuttle. We're here to give you a whip around look at some of the latest news coming out of the sports betting industry over the past week. Press releases, info at turnpikesportsradio.com. Keep those coming in. Watching on TV, you can catch us on Roku, Amazon Fire TV, Apple TV. You can watch us on our website, turnpikesports.us. And if you want to listen to the show, you can catch the audio podcast on Amazon Music, Pandora Podcasts, and the new Samsung podcast channel we have. This week, in our state and national reports, we've got July Arizona benchmarks to talk about. July, huh? Yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, we've also got August benchmarks regarding Nevada, Ohio, and Michigan. Uh, also, as well, New York, as well as some uh, interesting BetMGM women's sports numbers that were released oh, recently. interesting. Yeah, we're going through the uh, WNBA. It's yes. a great time watching that. So, yeah. In the deals segment, we've got deals involving Genius Sports. They've been in the news quite a bit recently. We've got a Jack Pocket deal to talk about. We've got our usual assortment of U.S. integrity and prohibit deals that has becoming a mainstay in this segment. It's unbelievable. It's yes. doing an amazing amount of work. We've also got deals involving wager wire as well as Canby. Okay. Uh, industry updates. We've got some information regarding the Kentucky launch. We didn't have a chance to talk about last week on the book report. So we've got some information regarding the Kentucky launch. They yeah, just recently, recently launched yeah, their mobile sports, their mobile betting, sports uh, betting industry there. Good, good we, for them. We've also got uh, launches of two new books online and retail in two different states to talk okay. about. All right. As well as a couple esports licensing uh, uh, deals that we have to talk about. The One of the states in the United States handed out two licenses regarding esports nice. over okay. the past week. Good. And then we're going to end up with our legislative roundup. We've got news coming out of North Carolina, Michigan, and Massachusetts. I know everyone is also talking about Florida. That's still sorting itself out. We're <laughs> yeah. going to wait to see a little bit more concrete yeah. information coming regarding not only the launch of online sports betting, but also what's happening with the U.S. Supreme Court. Yeah, lots of lawyers filing lots of briefs. So yes. uh, that's Florida right now. Yes. Uh, so uh, uh, with that, we'll start talking state and national reports right after this. of falls in the home occur in the bathroom. Don't put yourself or a loved one at risk. There's a safe bathing system for everyone's budget. Enjoy a bathing experience that combines safety, comfort, and excellence. If assisted living is not for you, a BCI walk-in tub may well be the answer, giving you the safety and freedom to live independently. A BCI walk-in tub is the most affordable and comfortable walk-in tub in the market today. With our dual drain technology, your tub will drain quickly. And for those that still like the feature of a shower, our two-way bliss gives you both a handheld and overhead shower head. We offer the best financing in the industry with payments as low as $99 per month or no interest, no payments for 18 months with approved credit. For comfort, safety, price, and selection, it's got to be BCI Walk-In Tub. Be one of the first 50 callers and save $1,500. Call 800-354-4377, 800-354-4377 for a free no-obligation in-home consultation. Attention. If you owe back taxes to the IRS, watch this urgent message. The IRS is cracking down by hiring 87,000 new agents to garnish your paycheck and put liens on homes and businesses. They can even seize your bank account. The IRS calls it enforced compliance, and now they have the manpower to get you. Penalties and interest on unpaid taxes compound daily. So call One Stop Tax Relief Shop and get the IRS off your back. They're experts in the Fresh Start Initiative, one of the biggest breaks the IRS has ever offered. And no other tax shop gets you more or faster approvals. One Stop Tax Relief has resolved thousands of cases since 2014 and saved clients millions of dollars. Call now for a free consultation. Connect with tax professionals who get the IRS off your back. Call 800 800-605-0688. 800 605 0688 
Welcome back to the Turnpike Sports Book Report. We're going to start our start off our state and national reports with the a couple numbers from July sports betting report from Arizona. Yeah, the, what you have to realize, Arizona, you know, is on its own time schedule there when they're uh, reporting their numbers. So, uh, so this is this is July, right? I, I have to admit. The, the let, reason, me, let me let me remember what I was betting on in July. I I, I, I don't even remember I, July. I can't even. So, but uh, regarding Arizona, July sports betting report, they passed eleven billion dollars in total handles since the start of sports betting back in two thousand twenty one. Uh-huh. We're lucky they're not reporting numbers in two thousand twenty one. All of the books in July. This is interesting. All of the sports book operators turned a profit for the month, except for one. Okay. Uh, a little less than uh, 7,000 in losses for a Superbook. Interesting. Yeah. They're the only ones that reported a loss. But again, you know, they, they that's the first time I've heard of Superbook reporting a loss. So mm-hmm. it could have been just an anomaly. I hear a lot of their commercials uh, in New York radio, on New York radio. Superbook so, Sports? Superbook Sports. So, uh, you know, they're they're a they're very good operation and, uh, you know. Uh, just, you know, sit yeah. back in Arizona. It's, a, it's an anomaly, it happens. probably. Yeah. It happens. Uh, top two operators, FanDuel and DraftKings, controlled 72% of the market. You had FanDuel with 41%, DraftKings 31%, BetMGM with 16%, Caesar 7%. The remaining 12 books, there's 12 left after those. Wow, okay. They had to share the 6% of the market between them. So the 12 books, what is that, Ed? Point five would that be? That's if you average it out over I, them. Some I'm, were bigger, some were more, some were less. Okay, yes. all right. Yeah, and you know what? The market share is going to be a theme throughout the report segment. Well, here. that's important. Yes, yeah, it's important. Uh, over in Nevada, Nevada uh, reported their August sports betting numbers. We're getting into present day. Hey, here. look at that! We're doing a little time travel yeah. from Arizona. Uh, uh, the state of Nevada passed thirty-four billion in all-time post PASPA handle. Mm-hmm. Still want to know what the overall handle yeah, is. Yeah, I know. From the Someone beginning. has to get that yeah. number to us. I mean, they've been sports betting for decades yep. now. So, you know. And this year, $4.9 billion in handle, total handle, $16.9 million in de- year to date taxes, which are pretty good benchmarks for Nevada. Absolutely. Uh, and also, here, here's where it gets interesting $127.8 million in revenue from online wagering is 51% of the total, hand- total revenue for this year. Mm-hmm. And we're starting to see the growth of online wagering in Nevada. August well, was August was the first time. Listen to this number. August was the first time mobile revenue accounted for at least seventy percent of statewide sportsbook revenue. Well, I I know in Nevada they put a premium on on getting people through those doors. You oh know, yeah, they, they they want people. And, and and let's be honest, Nevada is a big tourist destination. So you know. A lot of people, if they're sports betting in Nevada and they're a tourist, they go physically to the book. Yes. So, well, the the other thing I think a lot we're less seeing, people d- download an app and put money into it. So. Well, I think what we're seeing though is the increase of visitors to Las Vegas mm-hmm. since the, since everything got kind of back to normal, mm-hmm. and a lot of the visitors from outside of Nevada are used to mobile sports betting sure, more so sure. than going to a book, and a lot of people are uncomfortable still going to a retail book. You know, they don't well, know the procedures. Well, look, I mean, even if you yep. sign up with an online account yes. in Nevada, you still have to go yep. and complete your account. You have to physically go to the sports book yep. to complete the download of the app, if, if I'm saying that correctly. And uh, speaking of August numbers, we have Ohio. We just recently reported their August numbers. Regarding the mobile and online segment of the Ohio industry, 96.2% of the handle was mobile. Yeah. yeah. And 96.8% of the revenue came from mobile, yeah. which is very I mean, unusual for that state. We're starting to see that creep up a lot, too. The yeah. online revenue is almost becoming the entire the entire state's becoming mobile. Well, look, about. I mean, and it's also a cold weather state. Yes. In the, uh, the wintertime, when the yes. weather is cold, you don't want to jump in your car and yes. go drive, make a bet. So, you know, that's that living in New Jersey and the Northeast and in Massachusetts, there's nothing like, no. you know, looking out the window at the snow falling and say, Hey, you know what? I can still play my uh, game and uh, make a bet yes. without leaving the house. And uh, DraftKings led in handle while FanDuel led in revenue. That's becoming common. Yeah. We're seeing that a lot, but DraftKings and FanDuel together, 66% of the market. Mm-hmm. So those two are still controlling everything there. Sure. Okay. Uh, regarding 
uh, some of the online gaming uh, industry in the United States. Michigan seems to be a benchmark for a lot of the online gaming industry. It's actually the biggest of the online gaming industries, I think, in all the six states. Mm-hmm. Um, and we're talking about online casinos. The well, six online states casinos, for online yes. casinos. BetMGM usually draws in a, a, an average of about 35% of the market share. Mm-hmm. That's actually their lifetime average, yeah. 36% just about. Uh, this month in August, they brought in only 28.9%, almost 10% lower. Hmm. Interesting. And FanDuel popped up. FanDuel Casino is now, they brought in about 21.8% of the market now in terms of revenue and market share in Michigan, which is unheard of. I, I, I'd be curious to see what's, I mean, is there a marketing campaign in Michigan or what's happening with, you know, are there special promos or I'd, I'd very much like to see what's in Michigan and what's going on in Michigan with the online casino market. Because I need to tell you something, when I think of Michigan, you know, Bet MGM. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't know. In my mind, that's what I always think. Michigan Bet MGM, but um, no, I'd, I'd be very curious to see, like, what the marketing campaigns are, or what the promotions are, and with with the um, the comp system, what, what they're doing with comps and things like that. So it's an interesting thing happening in Michigan. Well, it's not just happening in Michigan in terms of national uh, online casino uh, revenue. Fandle just grabbed. 21% of the market, mm-hmm. the national market for online casino. Online casinos are having yes. an amazing year with yes. regard to revenue. And I'm, I, I'm shocked more states aren't jumping on board the online casino, you know, train yes. to try to get some money and in coming into the coffers. But it, it's just been absolutely amazing. New Jersey here, it's been incredible with online casinos. FanDuel Casino is making strides in terms of amp, app downloads, too. Mm-hmm. Uh, FanDuel Casino, 90,000 downloads in August. Wow. That almost tied the entire BetMGM family of apps, sports betting and casino. Mm-hmm. Total BetMGM downloads for the month of August was about 95,000. Wow. FanDuel Casino hit 90,000 alone for the casino. Wow. That's just – Yeah. One thing you got to know, the people listening to states that aren't yeah. – you know, that online casinos aren't allowed. You know, when we go to the FanDuel Sportsbook, there's also a tab where it has the casino. Yeah. So all these are kind of tied in together. Yes. So. Yeah. Uh, moving over to New York, we've got the week ending September 24th was the third straight week of at least $400 million in handle. Wow. Second wow. straight week, DraftKings led the industry for that state over Fandle. Mm-hmm. So handle-wise, DraftKings, two of the uh, two straight weeks leading in terms of handle. Fandle still leads in revenue sure. by about $2 million in revenue. But uh you know, it's it's kind of interesting to see DraftKings start to take point, over the that, handle. At one point, that might change. I mean, you I, don't it might lead be. and handle all that time, yep. and, you know, w- one of these weeks we're going to see a flip yep. there. And also the fiscal year-to-date revenue passed $750 million wow. for the state. Uh, BetMGM released some numbers regarding women's sports betting. They announced a 27% year-over-year increase in WNBA betters active. Great. Um, and they're seeing a rise in – sports betting for women's sports overall. I think the number was somewhere in the range of 40 to 41% year wow. over year growth. That's great. In terms of Boy. women's sports betting. So it's great to see that. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, that's it for the state and national reports. Let's head on over to some deal. Recently, Genius Sports unveiled their bet vision. Uh, system where it was the graphical overlays of NFL games that not only combine statistics, but also betting, Mm -hmm. bet slips, just graphical overlays for NFL games. It's a wave of the future. Yes. Genius Sports has done it again. They have announced a partnership with Premier League Productions, which is the company that releases all the televised Premier League games. Okay. Uh, They have created with Premier League Productions, Genius Sports, Mm -hmm. The Premier League Data Zone, which is another set of graphical overlays. Okay. This time it's performance analytics, which means in-game stats. That's great. You know, soccer is such a great sport for in-play betting. Yes. You know, it's just it's just great. So, uh, and, and this will help, by the way. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the more data, the better. Uh, I have to admit. Looking at some of the the graphics that they have in terms of when they made the release, they show some of the images. Mm-hmm. 
really, really cool looking graphics. It doesn't interfere with watching the game either. Okay. Do we do we still call these things betcasts or is that this like, isn't a betcast? It's not. No. So it's, it's this just, is just graphical overlays, statistical data, okay. performance. There's no betting involved in this. Okay. At some point, there probably oh, will yeah, be. Yeah. Yeah. yeah but yeah. Uh, the the information in this for oh, yeah. entertainment purposes yeah. only. Well, huh? fantasy, fantasy <laughs> soccer guess, yeah. too. Yeah. Well, fantasy. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's I I kind of. Sports betting and fantasy. Right. Anytime there's real money involved, I exactly. kind of lump that into yeah. one thing. Well, that's causing the problem for I a know, lot of operators know, in Florida. I know, so. I know, I know, but you know. Uh, Jack Pocket, Gannett, and USA Today Network announced a partnership with Jack Pocket, making the Gannett Company and USA Today the official media partner of Jack Pocket. Jack Pocket will be integrated into content across the USA Today network, including USA Today. And also, they always mention the, these three. The a a azcentral.com, which is the big uh, southwestern uh, portion of their uh, publications, okay. Arizona Central. NorthJersey.com. Okay. And Statesman.com, which is over in the Midwest. Okay. Uh, and Jack Pocket will also be the exclusive launch sponsor for the USA Today Lottery Hub. Wow. Yes. Okay. It'll be, if you All go right. to usatoday.com slash lottery, it's going to be the exclusive launch sponsor. Jack Pocket will be the exclusive launch po uh, sponsor for the new Lottery Hub at USA Today. I Network. will check that out. That's actually pretty cool. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. I like that. So couple of U.S. Integrity deals to talk about. We've got Every Matrix announcing a partnership with U.S. Integrity. Every Matrix will be providing U.S. Integrity with its odds matrix, real-time data feeds, and sports data API solutions to help track irregular betting and fraud to help with U.S. Integrity's operations in doing even more than what they're doing right now. Right. We've got U.S. Integrity also doing a deal with the Georgia Tech Athletic Association, Okay. College sports. Yeah, absolutely. Big, big for U.S. integrity. Uh, and also Prohibit, which is a joint venture with U.S. integrity and odds-on compliance, mm -hmm. did a deal with Underdog Fantasy. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Now, the I've one, seen a lot of their commercials. I, I, I have to so. it raises a question for me. And Underdog is one of the ones that's under fire for the fantasy sports betting, fantasy sports slash sports betting thing. Why are you doing Prohibit if you're trying to, you know, get around the sports betting. Well, thing. I mean, there's I understand a, it. And at some point I think underdog has to deal with that. Certainly there are integrity issues in yeah. fantasy sports as well. So yeah. it's great that they're getting involved yes. with prohibit because I, I think that's such a great, great program and great yes. thing for the uh, sports betting and fantasy sports yes. industry. Uh, sports illustrated through its uh, parent company, authentic brands group, which runs SI sports book. Yes. Their partner is open bet. Open Bet just did a deal with Michigan's Island Resort and Casino mm -hmm. uh, to launch their first retail location in the state. Oh, okay. This is, I think, this is the first SI sports book ever retail wise. I have to check that out. I haven't seen and like the screenshots of it. I haven't looked at it yet. So it, it, it looks interesting. Open Bet's a very good platform to yeah, run a sports book yeah. on, and SI Sportsbook is always a sponsor for the East Coast Gaming Congress. Yeah, yeah, no, yes. it's, it's great. It's 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 uh, well, look, I grew up with Sports yes. Illustrated, so I'm, I'm very interested to see what the uh, sports book looks like. Uh, Canby Group did a partnership with Prairie Band Casino and Resort to launch the first tribal sports book in the state of Kansas. Okay, good. So great. that's first of its kind right there. And then we have WagerWire doing a deal with SB22, the sports book provider. Uh, they are now going to be able, to, SB22 will now be able to utilize WagerWire's platform to offer their customers the ability to have a secondary market for their bet slips. Mm -hmm. That's automatic inside SB22 with this implementation. Okay. Which is always great to see. I mean, uh, a lot, yeah, a lot no, of absolutely. people want that extra step sure. to have the secondary market in some of these sports books. It's becoming commonplace now. Absolutely. I love it. Uh, that's it for the deals. Let's head on over to some industry updates right after this.
every 40 seconds a kid is reported missing. Find the Children provides educational material that teaches your kids how to recognize and avoid predators. Our recovery programs are very successful in bringing kids back home to their family. You can help protect our kids and bring the missing kids home safe by donating your unwanted car, truck, SUV, or van. Running or not, we guarantee you will receive the maximum tax deduction. We provide fast free pickup usually within 24 hours. Over 2,000 kids are reported missing every day. Call now to donate your vehicle. Donate now to bring these kids home safe. Call 800 934 2260. 800 934 2260. 800 934 2260. Welcome back to the Turnpike Sports Book Report. I'm Doug Weishuttle here with Dave Weishuttle. We're going to start off our industry updates talking about the online sports betting launch in the state of Kentucky. Yeah, no, it was huge. You, you always love those uh, those opening days of mobile yes. sports betting when Can, everything, everyone jumps on board. Let me tell you, the online operators in Kentucky, kind of interesting to see who did what in mm -hmm. terms of uh, under Kentucky sports betting law, you can be 18 and over. Yeah, to do sports. Betting. Very, very interesting. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, well, look, and to be fair, you can you, you have to be eighteen to bet on horses yeah. in New Jersey. So yeah. it's uh, and when you talk about Kentucky, you're thinking horses. Well, what's interesting, what's different between Kentucky and New Jersey? Everybody in New Jersey who has to who offer sports betting, customers have to be twenty one yes. and over. Yes, yes. Here in Kentucky, we've got Barstool, still Barstool there. It's going to be pe uh, ESPN bet at some point. Bet MGM, Caesars, Fanduel, Fanatics all requiring 21 and older, while we have DraftKings and Bet365, 18 and over. Interesting. You That's know, a very different I know, type of dichotomy uh, there. It, I, 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 I want to see a study done. Does Do the sports books that allow 18 and over have a bigger advantage over the ones that do the 21 and over? That's going to be interesting to see that breakdown. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and I'm, I'm very curious to see if those sports books stick with the 18 and yep. above. You know, it's... Uh, because, you know, the American Gaming Association really yep. recommends 21 exactly. and above. So. Bet, Bet365 was the first European operator to launch in Kansas, mm -hmm. uh, in Kentucky, Kentucky. sorry. <laughs> um, also, Circus Sports announced a deal with the Cumberland Run Harness Track, which is they're going to be opening later this year. And GeoComply released released numbers for the first 24 hours of the Kentucky Online launch. Oh, I love these numbers. Yes. I love these things. Okay. Uh, regarding Kentucky... 2.02 million geolocation checks in the state on the in the first day of online sports betting. 200,000 active accounts. Wow. Comparison, they did Louisiana the same time frame, the same 24-hour period. Basically double on everything between Kentucky and Louisiana. Kentucky doubled. Yeah, Kentucky doubled Louisiana. Okay. The first 24 hours. To be so. fair... Every, I'm going to say parish, but they're actually counties and a lot of people. Not every parish in Louisiana allows sports betting. So in Louisiana, it's not the whole state. It's just certain parishes or or counties, as we call them. So They also compared to, uh, like, Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. And kind of not an even comparison. 48 hours for Massachusetts to 24 hours. Uh Still Massachusetts led, but the one thing you got to take it's with pop Massachusetts population density, they also launched with the NCAA tournament. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's it's uh, kind of interesting to see some of those numbers there. Uh, like I said, also Caesars uh, first bet they took on their app in Kentucky, Detroit Lions to cover against the Green Bay Packers on uh, <laughs> that that game on Thursday well, night yeah, football. They won. <laughs> 
<laughs> congratulations. That uh, What a great first bet, you know? Yeah, that's actually a very interesting first bet to do. I thought you'd see something more local. No, I, well, I don't know what would be local in Kentucky at on a Thursday night in that's true. late September. That's true. So I, I don't know. I don't know. But uh, no, hey, hey, first bet's a winner. So. Uh, BetMGM announced the opening of a new retail book in downtown Cincinnati, the BetMGM Sportsbook at the Banks. Okay, that was... That was Great American in, Ballpark. Yeah, that was in the ballpark or next to it the ballpark? It was in the, the beer hall next to it. Okay. Was it attached? No, it was, was just in the area. In, okay, so yeah. th- that that one moved, right? right? Okay. Three in-person wagering windows, 14 self-service kiosks, 200 seats, a lounge for VIP patrons. Oh, nice. So very nice, nice job there. Circa announced their launch in Illinois. They did online as well as retail. The, the retail is at the temporary location because they have to deal with Full House Resort. Mm-hmm. Uh, they will be launching a permanent book when the Full House Resorts uh, Casino finally opens in 2024. I believe it's the opening time for that. I'm still waiting for Circa to come out east, you know, get they're to New slowly Jersey. Getting, they're I, slowly I know, it's like they're kind of working their way yeah. across the country. But no, because I've been fascinated with their, uh, you know, their contests and, you know, yes. hearing the uh, update. That's the first thing I think of when there's a major upset in uh, football or yes. the NFL or um, NCAA, I was like thinking, hmm, wow, let's. Uh, I wonder how many people fell out of the contest in, in with that game. We're going to finish up with two esports licenses okay. or e licenses given to esports uh, organizations in Colorado. Sports Information Services received a license from the state of Colorado to provide their. Uh, e-soccer and e-basketball competitive gaming events. They're self-produced. They offer those to uh, sportsbook operators to run tournaments. Not tournaments. They're daily uh, games on. They're mm-hmm. running constantly. Okay. It's almost 24-7. So uh, they're non-tournament e-sports, so it doesn't fall under any tournament regulations. Okay. And um, also Odin, O-D-D-I-N dot G-G, Odin dot G-G, also got a license from the state of Colorado to bring their esports betting suites to the state as well. Wow, big uh, esport nudes out of Colorado. Colorado. Colorado's oh, nice. making strides nice. with esports now. Okay, that first table tennis. Now they're doing esports. Yeah, yeah, boy, it's it's great that they're doing that. Yeah. Boy, it's, it's really. Uh, I think everyone's going to look to see how Colorado, especially with these two deals, how they handle the esports. So it, it's going to be in- interesting for the other states to look and how this works out. Well, the uh, SIS Sports Information Services, their esports uh, betting system is already available in New Jersey. Yep. Uh, Auden is in Ontario. They went there first, and they went into New Jersey. Now they're in Colorado. Okay. Uh, that's it for the industry updates. Let's finish up with our legislative roundup. We're going to start the legislative roundup in North Carolina. The North Carolina Lottery Commission approved a charter to create a sports betting committee that will handle sports betting issues that do not fit neatly into other committees. Okay. All right. Unanimous decision. And it's actually yeah, kind I of a smart it's a one. Good it's idea. a good idea. They're mean, getting ready a... to launch their sports betting industry okay. and uh, their mobile sports bet, their commercial sports betting industry. Mm-hmm. And, you know, this is actually taking a nod from what's going on in other states because even like in Massachusetts, they're still trying to figure out what issues fall under what departments and all that sure, other stuff sure. regarding their gaming commission. So this is basically kind of a catch-all commission that yes. you will look at this yeah. issue. Okay. If, if there's an issue that doesn't fall under certain divisions under the gaming and lottery commissions, that goes to this committee. Okay. Smart move. Yeah. No. Um, Cover all bases. Yeah. Uh, Mission Gaming Control Board announced that they had just seized – uh, a whole bunch of new illegal gaming uh, machines at one location. Uh, <laughs> so where was this one at? Was it like at the back of a convenience store, or was it like an office, or something like that? Uh, it was. In, lo- it was in one of one of those right there. Yeah, I, I love these raids when yes. you know it's uh, they. I mean, there's a lot in New Jersey uh, years ago. They yep. they, they were taking out uh, slot machines for God's sake. Yep. You, you know they're illegal. I mean, it's unbelievable. So far uh, through July of 2023, total of 1,195 illegal machines have been seized and destroyed. 470 
$1,401 in cash has been seized on the property as well. Mm -hmm. And since November of 2022, 48 locations have received cease and desist letters. Okay. So they are really trying to crack down on illegal sure. gambling machines. I'm surprised they're sending cease and desist letters. I mean, it kind of, you know, if you're going to raid someone, well, it, catch them red-handed, I guess. They get the notice. If they don't, then they get the raid. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. I guess so. Yeah. Uh, up in Massachusetts, DraftKings had applied for a waiver for removing the 20 or adding the 21 plus into their logos everywhere in all the stadiums. Mm -hmm. uh, what happened was the Mass Gaming Commission approved different bench, uh, different timelines for each venue. Yeah, because look, I mean, yeah. when they when the Mass Gaming Commission put that rule into place, yeah. I mean, things were already yeah. created. They, you know, it, it would take a lot yes. to change, like a board or a uh, a or advertisement a to monster. be placed. Yeah, to be placed <laughs> on on um, some sporting event wall or yes. it, so it, it would take a lot of time, number one, and a lot of money. So, you know, it's, it's good that the mass gaming commission did that. So. Well, for Fenway park, mm -hmm. they got till November 20th. Okay. Uh, for TD garden, T I almost said TD bank, yeah. TD garden, December 1st. And regarding Gillette Stadium, they... By the way, not a lot of time. Not that, a lot that, of time. Not I'm thinking about it. I thought it'd be a couple months or in the spring oh, no, sometime, the, but no, okay. But uh, the Gillette Stadium one is kind of interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, they have what's called the DraftKings Sports Zone, which is an entire section of restaurants and mm -hmm. uh, food. I guess, I guess you can call it a, a food court or whatever you want to call it, but it's called the DraftKings Sports Zone. Okay. The Gaming Commission said that didn't fall under this regulation. So they didn't have to change anything. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, they did change before this meeting where they applied guess, for the extension. I, I guess the sports zone is kind of like a restaurant right. more than it actually yeah. being seen in yeah. the stadium. Maybe yeah. that's it. But they also did change an LED sign leading into this already, into the sports zone mm -hmm. before this meeting. Okay. So they did some proactive stuff. Well, look, an LED yeah. sign is easy to change. Yeah. You know? Also part of the meeting that just happened with the Mass Gaming Commission Penn Entertainment finally presented ESPN bet to the commissioners. Okay, uh, they they have assured the commissioning the commission that no ESPN role in the operations of the book. Okay, you know as opposed to what Barstool was doing. Mm -hmm. uh, so no ESPN role in operations, no change in the management. They will not be promoting Barstool Sportsbook during the transition. They said that sometime in November. ESPN bet will launch in Massachusetts sometime in November. Huh? Sometime in November. So, it, it, are they talking retail? And it, are, it, are we talking about? It's just online. The, um, just, oh, online. just online. Just online. Because I know Penn has a property, and what, what is that? Um, Plain Ridge Park. Plain Ridge Park is. I'm assuming that will also change at yeah. some point. And also, Penn also guarantee that they will continue the 21 and over college game day uh, prohibition for the Barstool College Sports a college game day sports yeah, show yeah. during the transition. Okay. Once the transition happens, I think Barcelona is on its own. Mm -hmm. So, but Penn will be keeping that prohibition going during the transition. Okay. Uh, that's it for this week's Turnpike Sports book report. Keep the press release coming in. Info at turnpikesportsradio.com. If you've been following on TV, the ticker below us has been running with news stories that we didn't have a chance to talk about in this half hour. And as always, a full print version of the Turnpike Sports book report will be put up on the blog after the show is released. TurnpikeSports.us. Click on the blog button. You'll see the uh, full print version there. And that'll do it for us this week. We'll see you next time on the Turnpike.